Good morning, I'm Charles Osgood, and this is Sunday Morning. And Eugenia Zuckerman joins us now. Good morning, Eugenia. Good morning, Tom. When an instrumentalist such as yourself or a singer would appear in recital with a pianist, uh, he was usually called the accompanist, but I noticed that that doesn't happen anymore. Is that just a political correctness? Well, it's musical correctness, and Samuel Sanders, the pianist, has been instrumental in getting people to understand that it's really an equal partnership. Instrumentally. <laughs> Instrumentally, yes, indeed. And he's played with some of the greats of our time. He's played with Rostropovich and Jesse Norman and Isaac Perlman, Pinkus Zuckerman, etc. And he's played seven times at the White House. He also is a fantastic musician, and he has a life story that's truly inspirational. Pianist Samuel Sanders collaborates with many of the best musicians around, like violinist Itzhak Froman. He's one of the funniest guys I know, and he's a wonderful musician, so it's always a pleasure for me. And flutist Paula Robeson. Oh, he's a wonderful artist, he's a thinking artist, he's a devoted artist. I like it because it is an exchange of ideas, and the ideas are always different ones, and people are always different. Samuel Sanders never wanted to be a soloist. He always found making music with others much more to his liking. Yeah. Come on, Maggie, let's go. Come on, Meg. Samuel Sanders has always put those he works with ahead of himself. He's never wanted his problems to become their problems. And Samuel Sanders has had problems, heart problems his whole life. He was what is commonly called a blue baby. His heart was malfunctioning and his blood was not getting enough oxygen. Since he wasn't able to run outside and play like other kids, his mother decided he should have piano lessons. She thought it, was, it would be a nice thing to keep me occupied by having me study piano. And I love music. As long as I can remember, I've always loved uh, the kind of music that I actually play. The first musician Sanders collaborated with was singer Robert White. They met when they were both just 17. And some of my first gigs, you know, first things were playing at Catholic events because he was Irish Catholic and so he did a lot of communion breakfasts and the Cardinal's Christmas party. <laughs> at the same time that Sanders' career was blossoming, his heart was getting weaker. And then there was only one hope, a heart transplant. Seven years ago, Samuel Sanders got a new heart. He had been told that he would not survive a heart transplant after three previous open heart operations. Sam convinced us otherwise, and we were proud to have provided him with the opportunity to... Last year, Sanders was honored by Columbia Presbyterian Hospital in New York as patient of the year. The transplant itself was a blessing. Uh, I don't think it takes any special kind of courage to have the opportunity of having a life saved. Um, it takes endurance, but, but I don't think that that means that you're necessarily courageous. But if courage is, as Ernest Hemingway said, grace under pressure, then Samuel Sanders is courageous. Throughout his career, no matter how sick he felt, Samuel Sanders never disappointed his colleagues. But it's this feeling that I have and that I've always had was that I have a responsibility to the people that I play for. If I was a solo, if I was soloist, um, I would have canceled. But I felt that I had rehearsed this program with these people that were depending on me, and I had to come through for them. And still, every other month, he spends two days in the hospital undergoing a procedure called photophoresis to prevent coronary disease. It's not a big deal. You spend, you know, four or five hours two days a week, hooked up to a machine, and your white cells are separated from the red cells, and then the white cells are treated with the medicine, and zapped, I think, with ultraviolet rays. The 
practice what I do no matter where I am. My, my, always my main concern is not so much the size of the piano, but that the keys go up and down. <laughs> Sometimes they don't go up, they just go down, they stay there. Um, let's see, where was I? His warm-up routine includes what might seem like endless scales. Whenever it's not filming it just, he goes out of his mind. Yeah, so what do you got there? Samuel Sanders and Isaac Perlman have been performing together for 31 years. <laughs> I don't do it for Sanders, I do it for Sanders. Sanders is very good at it. And he's very critical, by the way. Uh, super critical. It's very hard to play with him. He's uh, one of the most demanding people I've ever worked for, which can be very frustrating because you never can seem to please him. Uh, and at the same time, it does raise your level a lot. Sanders also feels that working with young, talented musicians like cellist Andres Diaz keeps him alert. Sanders always takes the time to work with younger musicians in master classes. It seems to me you're not, you're not catching any mood. You're trying to play the right notes. Yeah. Now, I, I, love, I know how difficult this is, but if you could do... He knows that sometimes just the right words from a good teacher can have a lasting impact. I like the idea of working with younger people in general, and I like this enthusiasm that they bring to things. I still feel enthusiastic. Every August, Samuel Sanders can be found in Cape Cod at the Cape and Islands Chamber Music Festival, which he started 18 years ago. A lot has happened to Samuel Sanders since then. At the age of 60, He's a man with a lot of heart and a renewed sense of optimism. Are there things that you haven't done in life that you want to do? I haven't played second base for the New York Yankees. <laughs> <laughs> but there are no regrets. I've done everything uh, that I would like to do. I have, uh, I have it all, really. <laughs>